Good morning everybody, or whatever time of day it is that you're watching this. Um, we're in the studios today at Highlight Crafts, which is fabulous. I always love coming in here because it gets rid of all the noise and all the other stuff and I can just craft, which is lovely. Apart from Andrew, who's in my ear. Yeah, I'm not even going to comment on that at the moment. Maybe during the class. Right, so what I wanted to do was... Um, reintroduce you to the Kingdom in the Sky from Quaker Bird. Thank you ever so much for purchasing it and getting this class. And I thought we'd do a picture. Now, when I first saw the artwork, I loved it, but for me it was quite, it was for little ones, you know, little girls, little boys, which is lovely because there is a quite a shortage of stuff for children in the crafting industry. So that's a really nice thing to do. Um, but I also wanted to make it for grown-ups too. So big girls like me. <laughs> it will still call themselves a girl even though I'm 54 um, and it's just adding a little bit of brown ink so I thought what we would do is make a box frame so that you can see that you know I, I know I know sometimes a piece of card this size is a bit scary especially when it's just white but I can teach you how to build it up into a proper scene and I think you I think you'll really enjoy that so that's what we're going to do so first of all I've got a box frame just a white box frame and I've cut this piece of card to 26 and a half centimetres square because the mount is 25 centimetres. So I know that this is going to fit over the top or behind the mount so that you get to see the picture. So I'm going to work on the whole area because I know that I haven't got much space. I've got about three quarters of a centimetre on either side and top and bottom. So I'm going to start by creating the sky. So we're going to use tumbled glass and stormy sky. And these are oxides. So I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Oxides today rather than using just the normal distressor inks and all I'm going to do is get one of my blending brushes and I like these blending brushes um, because they've got a nice flat surface area but what you want to do is load up that brush with colour okay and just by using blues in the backgrounds we're actually naturally going to create clouds and that's what we want to want it to look like so I'm just going to come off on my mylar or your glass mat whatever you've got at home and I'm just going to start going in and just literally, I'm not completely filling it. I want it to look like a summer day sky, which in England is probably grey and cloudy, but hey ho, <laughs> I'm all right with grey and cloudy actually. Right, so we're going to pick up any ink that's left on our mylar or glass mat, depending on what you're using. And the reason that we use a glass mat or mylar or something that's got a slip to it is because you want that ink to blend. If I was trying to do this on maybe a self-healing mat, the ink wouldn't flow, wouldn't be as smooth um, picking it up off that than it is on this. And I just li I like to have that ease of use because as we get older, we lose some dexterity in our hands. And, you know, it's, it's kind of when you're crafting, you don't want to be in pain. So just make it as easy as you can. And these brushes are great because they've got the big handle on the top. So whatever brushes you, you like to use, that's entirely up to you. You know, you could even do it with um, the inks and a spritzer and wet it and pick it up. So you've got like a watercolour wash background. It's up to you. So that was tumbled glass. This one is stormy sky. But you can see here, I was starting to get that look of those clouds. I mean, it, you wouldn't believe, would you? It still blows my mind as ink with things like this because that looks like a cloudy sky. And all we've done is added some blue ink. It's, I love it. It's so clever. And then with the same brush, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Stormy Sky, which is slightly darker. And I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of that blue because the sky is never one colour of blue. It always, Every time I look at the sky, it reminds me of my dad because um, when Matthew, my son, was little, that's a long time ago because he's 34 now, if they go out, they used to go out on a weekend, my dad and my mum and Matthew while I was working. And... Um, Matthew came home one night and he said to me, Nana, he said, yes, darling. He said, not Nana, Mum. Gosh, you can tell I am a Nana now, can't you? Mum, I said, yes, darling. Why did, Grandad said something really funny today. I said, did he? What did he say? He said, oh, look, Matthew. He said, well, it was raining and it was really grey. And then all of a sudden he looked up at the sky and said, look, Matthew, there's enough grey, enough blue sky to make a pair of trousers. And I don't get it. <laughs> And I just looked at him and I went, do you know what, Matthew, I don't get it either. But I think what he's saying is that there's a little bit of sunshine after the rain. And he was like, oh, OK, that's all right then. <laughs> it was just one of those things that my dad used to say. And we all used to look at each other and go, what? 
Right, so green now for the grass. Okay, so we're going to use peeled paint, which is the lightest one, and mowed lawn, which is the darkest one. And I'm just going to bring in another brush and I'm going to pick up the peel paint first because that's the palest one. So I'm just going to go on here now and just add some ground into here. Now this is a bit yellowy, it's a bit olive colour, but that's all right because we're going to add mowed lawn on afterwards. And I'm just kind of not creating a completely straight line, but just kind of working up to that blue sky that we've got. Like that. There's a lot of funny stories I could tell you about Matthew when he was little and the things he used to say, but maybe if we see you on one of our classes, our face-to-face -face classes in our Highlight Academy, I'll tell you more. But he was very funny. Right, so mowed lawn now, we're going in, and this is a bit more of a traditional green grass colour, which you would expect with the name mowed lawn. And I'm just going to go in here, we're going to pick up any spare ink that's on there and we're just going to put some of this on here like this. Okay so now we've got our ground and we've got our sky. So I'm just going to go backwards and forwards side to side with this just to get rid of any ink that's on there. I've got a little bit of blue up there because I always do that. I can't not get ink in the right place ever. Always ends up somewhere else but that's all right because we'll just go in and blend that out. Right so we've now got our inking done. Okay, so I am just really quickly, because I know what I'm like, going to turn this mylar over. And it just wipes clean. You know, it's it's not a, just a piece of plastic would work, you know, something, as long as it's flat. And then I'm just going to turn this over so I don't get ink on this while I'm doing that. Right, good to go. Okay, so you could, if you wanted to now, spritz water on it and pick it up with kitchen roll and that will start will give you that oxidized look but that sky is just fab and this once we get all the pieces on will look amazing so let's have a look at what we've got to play with because we have a whole box full here it's got all these amazing things in them but because i'm going for a little bit more of a grown-up look i'm not going to use the dragons and I'm not going to use the little princesses. I'm going to use the grown-up characters that we've bought you before. So I'm going to use Clarissa from the old Curiosity Shop. And I'm also going to add some trees into there as well. So I'm just going to bring out a couple of these because this is what you're going to make when you get home. And this is what inspired me. In fact, we could have three of those, actually. We might be able to get away with three. Let's see. Yeah, I quite like that. We'll see where we get to as we go. So what inspired me to make it more grown up was actually this image, this artwork, because it is quite dark round here. So you've got this lovely brown element to it that adds the light and shade in. So you can see down this side of the tower, it's really dark. On this side, it's lighter. And they've followed that through with all the artwork. So the sun is hitting from here because you can see it's lighter on the right hand side and darker on the left. Okay, so we're going, to pull, we're going to pull that through and we're going to use that when we're inking our bits and pieces. So I wanted to show you how I did that bit. I know I showed you on air, but it's always good to see it again, I think. So let's bring in one of these towers and somewhere. I've even brought my cup of tea in today. I'm very well organised today ish, maybe. <laughs> and I've got a piece of copy paper here, just cheap. Cheap copy of paper, you don't need anything special. And I'm just going to tear a little bit of this off. And I'm going to use this as like a mask to mask off the areas that I don't want to put in on. So we're going to create that same thing. So it's going to be darker down this side, lighter down this side. So I'm going to start at the top. In fact, I'm going to start at the side. And I'm just using my memento ink. Doesn't matter which ink you use, really. Um, I would use a water-based ink, having said that, because it will blend better than a solvent ink. So something like Memento is perfect. And I'm just going to go in and I'm literally using a small brush and I'm just going in and adding a little bit of brown ink to the side of this part of the kingdom. And you just, you don't need to keep going back into your ink, just pick up what you've got because you don't need a lot. You don't want to take away the lovely colours that are in there. You just want to add and accentuate the features of the actual die cut itself. 
So I'm just adding this in. I'm going to go around the bottom a little bit as well, just to get rid of that white edge. So instantly we can see now that the sunlight is coming from this side and it's going to be darker on the, on the right. So I want to do the same thing here, but this turret, I want it to look like it's behind here. So I'm going to make that little bit darker too. So I'm going to mask off the rest, pick up a little bit of ink and off my copier paper, I'm going to do this. And the reason I'm using copier paper and the thinner the better is because if I used a heavyweight card, it's thicker and you can't get the ink right into the edges. And when you're doing something like this, you don't want the piece that you're colouring, then a gap, then the shadow, because it doesn't make sense because a shadow always comes from whatever the object is. It's not the object, then a gap, and then the shadow. It's one continual thing. So we're trying to make sure that we do that on here as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'd to pick up a little bit of this brown and just go down this side. And I'm getting right into that edge. So I'm almost angling my brush into that copy of paper. So you can see now that we've got that light and shade going on. And it makes such a difference you know, and it means that you can take your collection from being just for little ones to being for anybody that loves fantasy. In fact, Hannah, our lovely Hannah Stone came up with the perfect line. You know, sometimes when we're going on air, we have what we call an editorial, which is the story behind the product. And when she saw this, she said, oh, I love that. She said, and the brown ink takes it from being storybook to fantasy. And I thought that was a great way of describing it because fantasy for me is more grown up. And storybook is very, you know, like you read to the children before they go to bed, which is lovely. So for this turret here, I'm going to pull this piece of copy of paper down. I'm going to go over these little pieces here and then just add a little bit of depth into there. So again, I'm starting on my copy of paper and I'm just going to pull it off. And because the copy of paper is thin, it's allowing me to get down to those little bits. It's like when you mask off a stamp, you don't want your mask to be thick because when you then stamp your next bit, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the card. And then down this side, we're just going to have a little bit of brown, tiny, tiny amount. You probably won't even notice it's there if you didn't know you'd done it, but just enough just to add a little bit of depth. So now I've got that done, I'm going to cover this bit. I'm going to pick up a bit more ink and I'm going to go into here. And this is why it's worth getting a few different styles of brushes. We don't sell anything like this at the moment, but we are looking at doing, but there are loads out there, you know, and you can pick them up really inexpensively if you shop about. So I'm going to do this, pick this up a little bit on here. And this is quite a mindful process. So I sat, um, I went, I was at Stephanie's house one night and they were, they were out, I think for dinner and, um, they obviously invited me. But I, I declined, politely declined. And I sat upstairs with a glass mat on my knee and with my with my ink on and all my little die cuts. And I just spent the evening watching TV and and just creating these little pieces. And I think that's something nice to do. You know, sometimes if you lose your crafty mojo for a couple of days or something like that, and you want to do make be creative, but you don't know what you want to make, this is a really good thing to do. So I've got that one there. If I just bring in another one you'll be able to see more clearly the difference between the two. So this one for me would be for little ones and this one becomes darker. And I love that about just adding a bit of ink because as I said earlier, it gives more diversity to your, um, to your collection. Right, so just use that to mop up any spare ink like that. And we can pop that to one side. Right, so let's start building our picture first of all. So we're gonna bring this back in and I'm going to use all these bits and pieces that I'd cut before. So I'm going to go back in here and this can come over here. So we'll start by building. See, I've got, how on earth have I got green ink in the blue sky? I tell you, even though I turn the mylar over, honestly, every time. But it's just part of the fun, I guess. I am really bad at it. I have no idea how we've done managed to do that, but it's there. Right, so let's start building up. So I've got some of the little pieces that we've we had to make the kingdom itself. And we're going to get some of these out and just have a play around and see what we want to do and talk about composition as we're doing it. So what I want to do is start about here. And I'm thinking about 
how much space I need. So that one could go there, so that's fine. So if I drop that down a little bit more, and I'm also gonna take it slightly over the edge because I want it to, I want it to look like it continues off the page. So I'm just gonna take it over the edge like that. We can trim that off after if it doesn't fit in the box frame, but I think it will because I didn't go to the full width of the frame itself. So we've got that, and then we start to build these up. So I quite like this. I'm going to build it up and we're going to have a whole scene going across here. And I haven't brought my glue. So I'm going to ask Andrew if somebody can bring me some pin flare book binding glue into here because I've forgotten it. <laughs> I've got quite a few things to film today. Um, and yeah, I thought I was organised, but I'm obviously not. Right, so let's start to just put these into position. So that's quite nice there. And then this one I like on the top of here. I like that to be behind that because again, it adds a little bit of height and just by moving some further forward and some further back will create that movement across. So it creates the depth of feel. So rather than having to use 3D glue gel or 3D foam or something like that to lift the pieces, just by moving some slightly backwards or some further forwards gives you that look of being behind and depth and perspective. And that's exactly what we want to be creating. So then we could have a little tower here that sits just there. And then we can bring a bigger tower in and have that so that it sits there like that. So you can see now how we're starting to build up this castle, which I think is, I love it. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna pop another one of those here, here comes somebody. Here comes my little knight in shining armour, or Amanda. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Tell you. Let me just make sure that it's not blocked before you bring it. No, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that and then I'll be like, bring another one in. Right, so let's start to put these down now. So I'm going to just use a bit of this glue. And we're going to pop a little bit of this on here. You don't need a lot because it's going to be in a frame. So it's not like it's going on a mantelpiece where it's going to be warm and the bits are going to start falling off. And also it's going to be encased in that. So you'll see that what I didn't do was put glue right to the edge so I can then slip this behind. Because what I also want to do along the way is bring in the trees from the old curiosity shop because adding that in creates more depth and dimension. So if we start to put that in here, I'm still aware that I'm going to be using this, but that can be coming from behind the tree like that if we need it to. So that's kind of where I'm heading. So let's glue that tree into place. So just a little bit of glue down here and that's just going to slide in behind there like that. And again, I'm going to take that just slightly over the edge like so. Okay, so we'll start, we've got that bit now. So this piece can now glue behind there. And again, I'm just gonna put glue down the left-hand side and into the middle a little bit, but not right over. And then I'm just gonna pop that behind there like that and start to build up this picture. And you know, you are very, more than welcome to make and sell with Quirky Bird. And I think, you know, if you did a stall, especially coming up to Christmas, you know, because we all go out and we all buy all these Christmas presents, don't we? And we buy toys for the little ones and stuff like that. But I think to have something like this in your crafty arsenal that you can make things with to make and sell. You know, my granddaughter would love it if she if she opened a, one of her presents on Christmas morning and this was in it. Because it's something different, isn't it? You know, nobody else will have one exactly the same, which is really cool. So let's see where we need another tree. So do we need another one behind here? Yes, I think that works nicely because you've got that little gap there. So it's filling the gap. And then also looking at what we've also got here, I'm going to put one of these smaller ones just behind there. And I'll tell you why I'm doing it because this, this trunk here looks too narrow for that tree to have grown that high. This is the kind of thing that goes through my head. And it has to be right. I am super, super picky. It has to be, it has to look right. It has to look real. That's the thing for me. So I'm going to pop this in here like that and just push that down a little bit further like that. So it looks now like there's a hill behind it and the trees are growing on the hill. This is how my brain works. It's just the way I am. Right, so the next one is going to be this tower here. 
So a little bit of glue onto the back here. And you can do this on cards, you can do it in tins. You know, you don't have to use the pre-printed backgrounds if you don't want to, you can make your own. And I actually quite like that. I find that it's it gives me more satisfaction correct creatively to know that I've done all of it. And then this tree, we can have just grow in there. So I've pushed that trunk down already. So all I'm gonna do is pull that part of the tree back like that, the greenery. And this, this die I believe is called, was called Nature's Grandeur, um, the trees. And it's, oh, it's a really good one to have in your stash. So I'm gonna put that on there because that looks nice. And we're building this whole kingdom, which is just fabulous. So let's carry on building. So I'm now replicating where I've already been. And this one I'm gonna put over the front of here. So I'm gonna bring it a little bit further down as well so that we're building that layers, yeah? And then, and sometimes it's good. So when I'm filming like this, I've got a, what we call a monitor in front of me and I can see what it looks like. And it looks different on the monitor than it does in real life because I'm looking at it from overhead like you're looking at it now. So sometimes it's good to take a photograph from above and then look at the photograph before you glue everything down to see if you're happy with that composition. I remember when, um, when we worked at iHub, Stephanie and I, um, and um, she said to me one day, right, we're gonna do a Fleur's USB with SVG cutting files on. And I was like, brilliant, love that. Never done Fleur's. I'd seen it, It was I loved it, but I'd never had the time to get my hands on it. So she said, right, we're gonna put all this on this uh, USB and then I'm gonna order some big letters and we're gonna do, I want you to fill the big letters or at least do the sides of each of the letter. And I think she did home or craft or create or something like that. So I was like, brilliant. So I made my first flower out of foam. I was very happy. I knew what I was doing. I got to grips with it, which was great. So just so you can see here, I've put another one here and this one is growing behind there, but it's overgrown over this tower. So we're bringing that great, that green in and layering it backwards and forwards. So she said, right, she said, I'll order the letters and they'll be here in about a week. I was like, fine, great. So these letters arrived and she went, oh, I've put those letters by your desk. I said, oh, all right. And I thought, why should you put them by my desk, not on my desk, because my desk's tidy, which is unusual. And I walked in and these letters were three foot high. <laughs> Each letter was three foot high. That's not what I was expecting. Anyway, I went home and I made all these hundreds of flowers over the weekend, thoroughly enjoyed myself. You get completely lost in the making of it. It was, I loved it. But then I had, to, I had to stand on a table or a chair, lay them out on my lounge floor so you could see all the, all the word in full with all the flowers laid out on it and then stand and look at it from overhead because I did, you couldn't see what it looked like properly. So yeah, I always remember that. They're still on my phone actually, those pictures. I saw them, they popped up the other day. I was like, wow, that was a big job, but I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun. And I have to say, it will be much, much quicker now with the crepe paper that Amanda brings you um, from Highlight Crafts because that is so quick to do. It's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll ever forget that when I walked in and I was like, wow, okay. I know you said big letters, but blinking heck, they are big. Right, so I'm going to carry on going along and I'm going to keep adding my trees in now. So I might put another one here and then we could bring in another one of these towers and that could go there. So that's now growing in, I quite like that. And even though I'm, still, I'm using the same tree, because we're altering the height of it, it doesn't become too much on the project. I mean, I'm not a less is more kind of girl anyway. I'm like, you know, if you're going to eat the chocolate, eat the chocolate. If you, you know, don't, I don't understand these more to share bags. That doesn't make sense in my head. Why would anybody want to share something like Maltesers? I don't know. But um, it's, I think it's because I come from a scrapbooking background. So my first uh, foray, if you like, into paper was scrapbooking. And I taught scrapbook classes for years and years and years. Um, and I think that's why I'm never scared of white space or scared of a big piece of paper because I'm, I'm used to working on 12 by 12. So yeah, I'm hoping that we've managed, we get to do some scrapbook classes in the in our academy because I think, you know, there's there's different 
trains of thought with scrapbooking and this could be a scrapbook page you know it could be that you've been out you've been to a princess party you've been to a castle you know you've been somewhere amazing and you want to create a scrapbook page you could have your photographs coming down one side and all your bits around it so you know all the things that you use for card making you would absolutely use for scrapbooking but for me personally scrapbooking is all about telling that story which is kind of what we're doing here. It's what we do with Two Red Robins and it's what we do with Quirky Bird. We're telling that story because of the artwork that we've got, which is just a lovely thing to do. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do some like journaling classes and some colour classes and composition and all that kind of stuff. So keep your eyes peeled on the Highlight Crafts website because we will be posting all the classes on there. And it would be lovely to be able to go back to teaching scrapbooking. Even if it's only like once or twice a year, it would be lovely. So I'm going to put that forward. And I know what Stephanie will say. When are you going to have time to do that? <laughs> and I will make time to do it. I will make time. Yeah, she's telling, she keeps telling me off because I, I'm like, I can do that. She's like, Melanie, you've got enough to do. I'm like, no, but, 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 but. She's like, no. Stop from the woman that never stops which does make me smile right so let's get another one of these little turrets in here and I love the fact that you've got so many different little pieces that you can play around with even the smaller ones here so you could put another smaller one in there like that which would look quite nice so let's do that and really when I start I have a vague idea of where it's going to go but I don't have a concrete idea and I, that used to drive me crazy. I used to have to know what was going where and if it didn't turn out the way it turned out, I used to get really cross with myself. And then actually, I just looked at it and I went, actually, I really like it. So does it matter if it's not what it was going to be? No, it doesn't. And I craft because it makes me happy. Yes, it's my job. But when people say to me, what do you do on your day off? Well, well, what I do on my day off is I craft. In fact, I'm actually going home today. I'm working at home tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, And um, I've got some paint pouring to do, which, is, which I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am about because I haven't done that since I was in Turkey and it was one of my favourite things that we did when we went to visit Caden. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So watch this space. And we're also going to be doing some Cadence videos as well so that you know how to use the product because it's great watching it on TV but by the time your product arrives I know I'm certainly guilty of this I've forgotten why I bought it in the first place <laughs> so we're going to do some of that for you as well so it's exciting right so I'm going to put this final one in here and then just because I want it to look like it continues I'm going to put another one that goes over the edge and we'll cut that off okay so we'll just put this one in here now so from white card, we've now got our sky and our grass, and we've now also got our kingdom laid out there. So let's see where we can put these trees. We can probably fit one behind there, which will look great because it'll balance. So I've got height here. I want to balance the height here as well. And I'm actually going to take that a little bit further over so that that looks like it's going off the page as well. Just make sure that it's straight. Okay. There we go. Right, so we've now got our main piece done. But I also want to add some trees at the front. And I also want to bring in Clarissa. Because I think she works really, really well with this. So I've got Clarissa here, look, just there, which I love. I think she's just fabulous with this. And this is where it becomes more grown up for me. So you could bring in one of the princesses that could be Clarissa's daughter because actually the colours of those two work really well together. Her hand's out, so she could just, you could pop that just behind there. That looks quite nice. You could add a little bit of brown ink to that and bring that in if you wanted to. But I think I'm just going to use her, I'll probably change my mind in about 30 seconds, but for now, we'll go with this. Right, so we've got our basics here. So let's go for some smaller trees now. So let's pop some of these at the front here. So again, insta so right now you've got a background with your sky. You've then got another layer with your taller trees at the back. You've then got another layer with your trees that are further down. You've got a layer here with this piece of the kingdom and then a foreground. 
and then you've got oh excuse me quick sneeze then you've got um all your little levels so it's building up but just when we are just by putting that at the front there brings it forward again now there's no three-dimensional glue on this at all but it looks like there's lots of depth to it which is what we want to try and and do especially when you're doing a box frame because some box frames like the one I've got the glass is right at the front so you can't build up because it's you can't get the glass out of the frame so some frames you can some frames you can't depends where you get them from and how much you pay for them quite frankly um, so what you need to do therefore is make sure that you're not building too much depth at the front. So just be aware of which box frames you're buying and then we can take it from there. Right, so I'm just gonna tear that little stalk off there and we're gonna have this as a little bush at the front because we can. It's not a stalk, it's a trunk. Honestly, me and my words, hilarious at the moment. Right, so I'm gonna put another one there like that. And we're gonna put that there. So that one can go down there like that. And then we need some more down here. So let's bring in a larger tree and we can have that there like so. So let's pop that on there. Just bring in that to the foreground again, like so. And then if we've got a smaller one somewhere, we could have a smaller one just at the side of it there. Okay, I think I'm happy with that then, maybe like that and then we might no I'm happy with that I think that's fine I don't need anything else here because I'm going to build on top of this right so the next thing I'm going to address is the sky because we need to decide how many of these we want now this is obviously grey at the bottom so what I'm going to do is just move that out of the way bring in my back in my brown ink and add a little bit of brown to it because and this is just down to the artwork so for me when I look at this Got that house a little bit wonky. Let's move, use one of these. Um, when I look at this, I've got warmth up here. So the greys are warm, the browns obviously warm. You've got the pinks, which is almost like a cream based pink rather than a, a white base. So it's a little bit more tonal, a little bit more vintage. But the grey down here is a cool grey. So to change that, we're just going to add a little bit of brown and we're going to go all over it. And what that will do is warm it up a little bit. So try that. You know, if you've got papers, for example, example that you want to grunge down a little bit, brown's always a really good colour to use. Black isn't, because black is quite, is, sounds crazy, but it's almost like a cooler colour, which sounds ridiculous, but you know, you will know what I mean. You know, it has more of a a white, a white tone, which sounds ridiculous because it's black, but it is a cooler colour. So you have your warm colours, which are like your reds and your oranges and your yellows and your browns and your warm greys, which is more like, um, what's the best way to describe a warm grey? A bit like an elephant skin or a hippopotamus, I would say, a little bit more of that colour. So I've got that and now the difference between that and that is amazing because now what it's done is it's made that look all vintage so it's super cool and it's just a little bit of brown ink so I'm going to do the other one while I'm here like this I'm just literally picking up that ink going over the top moving it around with that blending brush and just taking away that coolness and if you're going to do that do all of it okay do these little bits take the time to do it because the difference that that makes is phenomenal it's all those little things that just make a difference in your crafting that takes it from looking like you know it's something that your children might have done to something that's quite grown up and somebody that understands the process of color and things like that and that's why I also want to do more classes on that because we can teach you about color I mean I know you know about color but it's always good to when I went to um America a few years ago to do a scrapbook course with EK Success and the Wilton Brands and they taught us about colour and how it works best on a scrapbook page, what you can do with it on a car, you know, that kind of thing. And it was just fascinating, absolutely fascinating. 
And even the, and journaling especially, even though I taught for years, it completely changed the way I taught classes. It went from us making pretty scrapbook pages to making something that future generations would know about their family. And that was an absolute game changer for me. So hopefully we'll be able to do some of that with you. Right, so I've got my little kingdoms in the sky here. I've got one with a flag on and one without. And I've got one with the little um, villages on here, which is super cute. And one just with one little bit on it there. So I'm gonna position those now and glue those down. So a little bit onto that area there and then get the glue on here. And remember, you're not wallpapering. You're just sticking something onto a piece of card. So don't go over the top with your glue. If you're having to use a lot of glue to make it stick, get a better glue because there's lots of different levels of PVA glue and you want more PVA than you want water. And the book binding glue from Pinflare, I have to say, is my glue of choice because it never lets me down. You will find that if you cut the nozzle, it will block more. So if you ever get, if you leave the lid off by accident and you come back to it, use a pin. Don't use a pokey tool because that's too big. Just use a pin and go in. Because what happens is the, the nozzle on it is so fine that you, the air can't get in to block it. But if you leave the lid off, it will create a skin over the top. And then you've got to try and get that skin out of your bottle. So yeah, use a really good quality glue and you'll be away. Right, I'm happy with this now. So what I'm going to do is just bring in my little pot of clouds. And we're just going to add a few clouds onto here, I think. Now, I don't necessarily want to go around these in brown because I almost want them to sink into the background, not stand out. So I'm just going to stick these on as they are. So I'm going to pop that there. And you've got different shapes of clouds. Now, if you decided that these look a little bit too childlike for your project, just leave them off. Okay, you don't have to use them. But I love the fact that you can make this grown up as well as for children. You know, I love that about it. I would, you know, give this to my little granddaughter and she'd be away making stuff for mummy. <laughs> that's what she'd do. So she might make all the Christmas presents from this this year. And that's the kind of thing that you can do. You know, don't just think about card making. Think about doing your mixed medias with it and using your rice papers to create a background and adding your paints in rather than inks and doing all those different things. Because we buy all this product and then we forget that we've got it or we forget what to do with it. So yeah, make sure that you stay tuned with Highlight Crafts because there's gonna be a lot more education coming your way, both face-to-face -face and online. So that's exciting because that's what we're all about. Right, let's get a little cloud up there and then we'll add a few more in here. And I'm gonna have some going over the tops of the trees as well, like so. And another couple around here. Like this, so that's gonna go over the top there. And then we'll add the smaller ones into the top up here. Right, there we go. A couple more on here, just some smaller ones up here, like that. And then I want one coming off the page about there. And then I want a little one coming, I need another little one about here, down here, just coming from behind here. And all I'm doing is looking at where there's white space and where it needs filling and where it can stand alone. So I just want a little one there and then another little one just to put the top. And what I'm going to do at the end of this is, is spritz it with a mixture of extender and Cadence uh, white metallic or pearl metallic, I think it's called, um, because I want to make sure that it, it looks magical. And for me, the magical bit comes with that spray. I love that bit. It's, it's just super cool. And don't be scared of spraying. Yes, it does go everywhere. So protect your table or do it inside a box you know, whichever you prefer. But yeah, it does look lovely. Right, so I've got my sky done. 
and I've also got my ground done now. So now we need to look at this bit here. So we're going to bring in our Clarissa here and we can have her just stand in there like that. So what I might do with this is just curve her a little bit and just glue her at the bottom like that. I would probably use a little bit of pin flare glue gel, but I am working in a box frame. So I'm constantly thinking about the fact that the box frame, I'm just gonna bend her forward a little bit like that. The box frame won't have much, much room for you to build out. I'm hoping that that's gonna be okay, but we'll soon find out, won't we? <laughs> that's what it is. Right, so I don't want any knights in shining armor or anything like that on here. I don't want any unicorns on it because I do think that it's quite a grown up image, but I'm gonna see if I've got the Clarissa facing the other way because when you bought the die, you got them facing in two different directions. And if I have, we'll use one. And if I haven't, then we won't. Nope, of all of those, there isn't a single one. Never mind. we'll use her again. But this time we'll put her up here. So we'll put her slightly higher up. I could sit and do this for days. I love it. It's just, it's easy crafting, but you are also thinking about the composition of it, which I like. So you, there's still a thought process that has to go on there. It's not just, you know, cutting it out, sticking it down. You still have to think about what you want your story to look like, but it is a lovely thing to do. Right, so now I need some little flowers. Okay, so we've got all these different flowers within this collection. Okay, so I'm going to start with one here and I'm just going to curve that like that. And that's going to just come to the front of her. So she's now behind those flowers. And I might even bring it right down to the bottom because I like that. We're going to create a border that goes across here. So just try things out rather than going in with the glue, first of all. Take a picture of it and you can see it from above and you can see what the composition actually looks like. And then when you're happy, you can then add your glue. So that's gonna go there. And then let's see what other flowers we've got. And I need another one of those. So I might have another one of those, just see if I can still tuck it behind her like that. That's nice, okay. So she's wandering through those flowers. And I have also put a little bit of brown ink on the flowers as well, just to tie everything in. Because if you're gonna do it on one thing, you kinda of need to do it on all of it. It's like when I used to do faux stitching all the time. I mean, everything was faux stitched and it does make a massive difference to your projects. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but if you were gonna do it in one thing, you had to do it in all of it. Otherwise the bits that you didn't do looked like something was missing. So this one here, I'm just gonna pop, we've got like this little border here and I'm just gonna pop that in front of those bushes there, like so. So it's just bringing in a little bit of texture and another layer coming forward. Right, let's see what else we've got because there were some little ones here. This is what I want. So let's have another little one here, I think. Like so. And I'm not thinking about, you know, when I built the kingdom, I wasn't thinking about how many of this have I got and how many of that have I got. It, it's just what looked right. So I wouldn't probably wouldn't put two the same together, but I've kind of gone tower, almost like the house bit, then these little pillars, then a tower and a house, and then more pillars, and then a tower and a house. So I have actually done it, but I've done it subconsciously. And that's, you'll get to that stage with your composition where it's just natural. The more you do it, the more it becomes more natural. And, and that's kind of where you want to get to, I guess. You know, where you can look at something and you're not having to overthink it every time. So I'm going to put a little bit of a smaller one in front of her. So she is literally tiptoeing through the tulips. There's a song there somewhere, I think. <laughs> if I've given you an earworm, I'm sorry. I've got an earworm today, but it's not that song. But I've got this song going round and round and round and round in my head. Because <laughs> I heard it on the radio and now I can't get rid of it. Right, so... Let's have a look at some of these bigger flowers here because that's quite nice as well. We can fill this space, but actually I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna bring in some more smaller ones because I'm gonna save the bigger ones for the actual frame itself, I think. So let's see what we've got left in here. Okay, we've got some more tulips, so we can use that. 
And normally I'm better organised with all my bits and pieces than this, but it was a, it had been a long, long week when I was packing up, so I just chucked it all in a box, <laughs> which is naughty, but sometimes you just need to get home. Right, so let's pop another one down here so we're balanced a little bit more there. And we might just add a little one just there. Yeah, I quite like that smaller one. That works. Just make sure when you've die cut your pieces out that you get all the little landlocked areas out because that adds the detail as well as all the detail cut lines that adds the detail in as well. So I quite like that smaller one. So I'm going to add another couple of those in here. So we might have one here. That looks quite nice, just one there. That's lovely. That works. In our garden at the back, because we look out over fields, we have part of it that's just all wildflowers. So we dug it over and then I bought these wildflower seeds and you literally just throw them at the garden. So we've got lots of flowers growing through the grass and it's, it is just lovely. It's not nice when you cut it because you don't want to, you, you're a bit like, oh, I'm cutting away everything, but it does look fabulous. And then we're going to add in, let's see what else we've got just to go down here because it needs something else just to cover that over. So I'm going to pop another one of those just there, or there, or there, there. And this is what, this is how, I just wanted to do this class so that you see how my brain works, which I apologise for because it's probably quite scary. Um, but just so that you can see how we start to build up that picture and that composition. Right, I'm happy with that now. So let's see what it looks like in our box. Oh, I'm going to spritz it first. That's what I'm going to do. Right, so this spray bottle, we sell these spray bottles at Highlight Crafts. They're a really good quality bottle as well, and the nozzle doesn't seem to block very often either. Although I do tend to remove the nozzle after I've used it, and um, put it into some water and spritz it, and that cleans it all through. So this is white pearl, and you'll see at the bottom where it's all gathered. Okay, so this isn't mica, this is the pearl paint, the white metallic pearl from Cadence. And then the liquid that's in it is Extender. So what this does is it makes the paint a little bit looser. So it means that you can then watercolour with your paints, you can do different techniques with it, but it also means that you can make your own spritzers. So if you treated yourself to a few of the bottles and some of the paints, I would put about that much paint in, so about, I don't know, three quarters of a centimetre up from the bottom, and then up to about halfway with the extender. And that will give you a really nice spritz. And what that means is that everything coordinates together. So if you are somebody that's into your mixed media, your paints and your spritzers can all match. But you can make, a, make the colours that you want rather than the colours that you can buy. So all I'm going to do now is just spritz this. And I'm going to come over here as well and just add a little... And it look, almost looks like pollen in the sky, which is lovely. And it dries quite quickly because it's a hybrid, so it's meant to go on all these different surfaces. But you'll end up with this just this lovely pearlescent finish. Can you see that? I mean, it's just beautiful. And it just adds that little bit more magic to your projects. So don't go over the top with it. You don't need a lot, but it really does make a difference. It's like, I'll tell you what it's like, it's like little fireflies flying around. And when you see the little flat, the little flat, it's like that. It's funny because from being little, my um, granddaughter, Alice, when you go outside our front door, there's this massive bush that's full of bees. I mean, it's just glorious. But also it attracts the little midges. And she, she calls them the pesky little white things, Grandad. Those pesky little white things are in the garden again, Grandad. She's very funny. Pesky little white things. Right, so make sure that that's dry. And then I'm going to bring in my box frame. And I'm going to position this so that it's within that mount, like that. Now, there is some depth to this because we've got the 3D at the top, okay? So I'm going to tape it down where I can. And where I can't, I'll just literally just put a little bit to hold it in. So I've got it quite central on here, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to just use some masking tape. This is actually quite good for your dyes as well. But um, I'm just going to use it to hold this in here because otherwise when I flip the frame back over, the picture will move. So we've got that. Turn it round. 
I've actually just bought myself, I don't, I don't know if I've already told you in this class, I might have done, I bought a turntable for my acrylic pouring so that I can spin it. I'm so excited. And then we'll come back and we'll film it for you. So that'll be good, won't it? A little bit of an extra, extra thing for you. Right, so I'm going to just press that down. So this is where the dimension is and the depth here. Okay. And then I'm just going to put another little bit at the top here. So I'm not trying to flatten it out. And I'm hoping that when I turn this over, it won't look like it's pressed against the glass because we've got this part in here as well, which will lift the back panel. And I do like a box frame. Right, so let's put the back in now. Just position this where we want it, making sure that you're getting the hanger in the right direction, which I need to check because I spun it round. No, that would have been upside down, see? Andrew's just said in my ear, you say you like a box frame, but I've never seen you use one. I'm like, that's such a fib, Andrew. Because Andrew was a producer at Creating Craft. And when I first did Quirky Bird, I laid all the stuff out and uh, it was all on the counters in the creative space. And Andrew went, I love it, but I do think that you need to do a frame because that's your signature. Because when we did Disney, I did some fabulous stuff. It was, oh, honestly, it's some of the, the work that I was most proud of because we, um, we did Harry Potter and we also did Pirates of the Caribbean. And the dyes were literally just dyes and we did charisma with them. Um, but then I did some dyes where I actually went in with a fine liner and drew in all the detail lines and then coloured them with alcohol markers and they looked fabulous. And that's probably one of the best things that I've ever done. I love those projects. They were so cool. And it actually looked like Johnny Depp. I'm just saying, that might be why I loved it so much. Right, so now what we can do is just put some corners in here, okay? So we can put some corners on there and we can have another one down here. So we're utilizing the fact that this can go like that. So you, you can have that flower at the bottom, but you can also turn it onto a corner. And just having those two on there just finishes that off. I don't think it needs anything else. I think it just needs those two. Now, because I'm crazy and I haven't brought my tool bag in with me, I'm using the book binding glue. I wouldn't normally because it's on going onto plastic. So what I would normally use is their all stick glue. Okay, so just to let you know that that's what I would normally use. And once I've finished this class and I go back into my desk, I'll, that's exactly what I will do. But now we've got a lovely, lovely picture. And I'm gonna hold this forward so that you can see it from the front as well. So just give that a press down. So if I just lift this up for you now, you'll be able to see, I mean, that is just, can you imagine, if you took that to a craft fair and put a 45 pound price mark on it, somebody would buy that because I would, that, I would buy that for my granddaughter without a shadow of a doubt, because it's something a little bit different. And then I'm just gonna bring in the other picture that I did while you're there. You could have these two side by side on a wall because that would look fabulous. So you could have that one higher up and that one lower down, and then you could have a third one on the other side. But what a great way of using your Quirky Bird products, I think. I think it's lovely to do something different rather than just cards. They look fabulous in the tins, and I'm gonna show you the finished samples now so that you can see. But I just love the fact that you can take it from teeny tiny in the tins to really big. And also what we did was we did like a little gathering die. So a swift die that had lots of the characters in, but in a smaller form. So that was available on highlightcrafts.com. It's still available now. It was the web exclusive that we did for the in Kingdom in the Sky collection. So if you haven't got that, you might want to treat yourself to that because it gives you the smaller images. So for in your tins, you can absolutely use your bigger images, but if you want to go teeny tiny, they're perfect for that. Right, I'm going to show you some of the finished samples that we have from the show. And then I think it will be time to say goodbye, which is a bit sad, but I have work to do. I know. If only I could sit and do this all day, every day. So this is one of the tins that we did in the show, actually. And we downloaded the background from the old Curiosity Shop. 
still available, still free for you. So download that. And then it has the blue sky that we've just created with ink. And then it has the grassy bit at the bottom. And it's quite naive in its artwork, which is nice. So I used the um, rounded rectangle dies that work with the tins perfectly, put the blue in and then just cut the grass parts and lifted them up on foam or glue gel, whichever you prefer. So that's one that I would send to my granddaughter. But this one is one that I would send to my daughter-in-law because mummy and, and daughter, that would be fabulous together. So grown up, childlike, and I love that. Or as Hannah said, storybook, fantasy. So they both get a tin. They both be with the same product but one will be more grown up than the other, which I like. I like the idea of doing that. Then we've got our little storybook here. So we've got a little book. So this die was on the show. I think they still think we've got a few in stock. So this is the um, Once Upon a Time die set and it's nested. So you get lots of different sizes. And we've got the little dragon coming in from the side here and the smaller version there and just, you know, just really pretty. Then we've got a book that we made into a card just by using the actual book shape as a, as a card shape. So cutting two and scoring across to create a card. I mean, these for me are ornaments. You know, it, this isn't just about making your cards. This was one that we did on the show as well. So creating an aperture, adding different inks into the background. So rather than using blues, using the colors that were in the flowers. And then again, I've put that pearlescent shimmer on it and it just, I love it. I just, I really, really love this collection. I think it's one of my favourites that we've done. I think this and the old Curiosity Shop are my favourites. And then we've got this one again, more for children with the knight in shining armour. That's probably not politically correct anymore, but you know what? It is in my world because we all like a hero, don't we? So we've got this. Then we did one, or I did one that's got like this trifold or this um, gatefold card. So it's not going to close that way because it's got all the depth and dimension, but you could have it like that in your envelope and it would still go in an envelope and go through the post. So you've got your lovely three-dimensional one there, which is fab. Then I did a wreath. Now this was lovely to do. So excuse the mess on the back, but I cut out... Um, I used the R construction weight acetate and the metal shim in the uh, from the, in the pro cut and our nested dies. You could do it on your scan and cut if you wanted to, and just cut a frame, and then started with these flowers. So let's show you these flowers. So I went round and did one. So northeast, south, and west, and then northeast all the way around like that and then added extras in and then built the little um, kingdom behind it. So that in the little girl's bedroom as a window and a window would look absolutely beautiful. I love that, I think it's a bit different. Then we did, this was one that I did before we went on air and I just used the pearlescent so I kept it white and clean. Just use a little bit of ink and the pearlescent in the background, but not in the rest of it. And because it looks quite dark, it looks darker on your screen than it does actually in real life, we need to lift it. So to lift it, we use white and we keep that white space. Sometimes white space can be a distraction. Sometimes it's a good thing. And this, because everything else is quite dark here, having that white around it makes it pop. Okay, so that's a good little tip for you as well. And then this one, which I thought was quite cool, was which just opens out. So this was just an A4 piece of card that I scored at six, I think it was five and a half inches, five and a half inches, two and, a, two and three quarters and two and three quarters. So it might have been a 12 by 12 piece of card, can't remember. And then I scored it all the way down and then I just trimmed off the bottom bit and that became this piece here but this is nice because you really get depth and dimension with this so again an ornament on a shelf in a in a child's bedroom would look magnificent then I really went to town with the storybook and had the kingdoms floating up in the sky this I want to put on a canvas so I want to get myself an A4 canvas create a background with paint and then have this as the main piece and maybe create stencils with it as well which would be lovely so that's a I want to keep going with 
Another one that we did for the children, which is super cool, a different layout. Also snipping into some of the die cuts and decoupaging them up because we're not adding the brown onto this. We can create height and depth by decoupaging them. And then last but by no means least, this is more of a childlike one, but I've used that pearlescent on there as well. And it's just, it's lovely because you'll just see that little hint. It's not a colour that kind of jars because it's white pearl. It just gives you that shimmer and it's a lovely way to create just to add that extra little bit of sparkle to your projects because I'm not good with glitter. I prefer using these. So I think that's the end of our class. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I hope you have great success with your collection. And once again, a massive thank you for supporting Quaker Bird. It means a huge amount to me. And keep your eyes posted, your eyes peeled for all the education that we're going to be doing on highlightcrafts.com. And I will see you very soon. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.